Hello everyone and welcome to the Eurovices Home virtual event. If you're here because you want to buy a property in Cyprus but don't know what estate agent to choose, who to trust with your hard-earned cash or where to find an English-speaking solicitor and how the process works, well you've come to the right place. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Rosie Bradley and I am the senior copywriter and at the Eurovices Home. It's wonderful to have you all with us today whether you're watching live or catching up on demand. In this seminar, I'll be introducing you to three experts who each represent a service we consider essential for buying a property in Cyprus. So I'd like to introduce you to our three expert guests. We're joined by Michael Lucas, a senior account manager at Smart Currency Exchange, Helen Daniel Du, a estate agent at Cyprus Emerald, and last but not least, Eleni Philippou, partner and lawyer at Polycarpus Philippou. To all of our viewers, this session is an hour long. If you have a question, please type your query into the Q&A box um, just at the bottom of your screen. Uh, where am I up to? If you do need a reminder of anything discussed today and want to share this with family or friends, this session is being recorded and will be accessible for 30 days on VFAIRS. So let's get started. Michael, it would be great if you could please start by giving us an introduction to yourself and how Smart Currency can help our viewers today. Hi, Rosie. Yep. So as Rosie said, I'm Michael Lucas. I'm a senior account manager with Smart Currency Exchange based in Hammersmith in London. Uh, we are a currency specialist that helps people to move money overseas, primarily for property purchases and helping people to manage their currency risk when doing so. Lovely. Thank you. And we'll come to Helen next. Hello. Hi, my name is Helen. I'm from Cyprus Emerald, property consultants, sales executive of the group. Um, our firm has been for a long time in Cyprus and we're helping people making their dream come true. Uh, come and buy a property in this lovely island. Um, we have knowledge, extensive knowledge of the market, but also we know how it feels when somebody wants to relocate or retire, choose you know, a different country to live. Um, most of us, if not all of us in this company, have been through, have been gone through the same thing. Me as well, my name is Greek. I come from Greece though, the mainland. Um, and I find it quite difficult. So I know how it is quite difficult because everything is different than Greece. Everything is based on the UK law. I'm sure your, for your viewers, it's gonna be much easier than it was for me. <laughs> Uh, let's hope so. Thank you, Helen. And Eleni, can you introduce yourself and Polycarpus? Hello. So I'm Eleni. I am the partner in charge of the property department at Polycarpus Philippou uh, Law in Cyprus. Um, our head offices are based in, in Paphos. However, we also have another office in Nicosia, which is the capital, and we actually service the whole island. So um, Polygarpos Filippo Law is basically your one-stop shop for all your legal needs in Cyprus, whether you're buying property, whether you need immigration assistance, whether you need commercial contracting, corporate services, we do it all. We speak several languages. We speak English, we speak Greek, we speak Russian, um, German, um, and, and, and a few others actually, are odd ones, you know, Dutch. Um, so, like I said, one stop shop for all your needs and your legal needs in Cyprus. Thanks so much, Lainey. Um, Okay, to all of our viewers, this session will largely follow a question and answer format and we'll speak to each of our guest speakers in turn. Should you have any questions, pop them in the Q&A section and I can ask your experts on our behalf. So we'll start by setting our budget to buy in Cyprus. So, Michael, I understand smart currency as a currency specialist. Can you tell me what that means? Yeah, absolutely. So we we specialize specifically in sending currency overseas. So uh, if you are um, rather than if you were going to a bank and, uh, you know, the uh, that they can advise you on sort of a a variety of sort of different products and what, what they do. We specialize specifically in currency and specifically buying a property as well. So, um, so we have 20 years experience uh, in, in doing so. So I helped thousands of clients who have been buying property, not just in Cyprus, but all over the world. Lovely, thank you. 
And so for people buying in Cyprus, they're obviously would be buying property in the euro. So what's the pound to euro rate looking like at the moment? Uh, so it's doing pretty well. So in the in the last couple of weeks, we actually touched an 18 month high. Um, there has been a lot of things affecting the exchange rates at the moment. Uh, obviously, the biggest one being political uncertainty. Obviously, as we're getting into further into this year, uh, there is a kind of a talk of how we're going to be uh, having another election. Uh, that's going to be, become more and more relevant as the year goes on. Um, on top of that, um, interest rates are a big factor as well. Um, obviously, the uh, interest rates and inflation have been uh, have been coming down um, in in the last few months. On top of that, as well, um, things like the sort of ongoing conflict in Gaza um, is affecting the exchange rates. Obviously, the UK war, um, Ukraine war, uh, as well, um, and also the the ongoing cost of living crisis are all um, all different factors that affect uh, how the exchange rate can move on a daily basis. Yeah, that's definitely true. Thank you, Michael. Um, so in terms of setting a budget um, to buy a property, is it right that I won't get the rate that I see on the news? Yeah, that's correct. So if you were to Google the exchange rate now, you'd see what's called the market rate, also known as the interbank rate. Um, so if you were a, a large institution like a bank and you're buying billions and billions of pounds uh, every year, that's the, the exchange rate that you can uh, transact at. Um, so the exchange rate that you or I could get if we were trying to buy a currency is uh, is a little different to that. Um, so you'll be somewhere lower than that rate that you see when you Google it online. Right, okay. Um, so what's the rough process for someone looking to buy a property in Portugal, in <laughs> Cyprus, sorry. Um, <laughs> no problem. Um, and would be looking to use your services? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really simple. So first off, you want to start off by um, you know, researching your desired location, having a look online, uh, speaking to lo local agents in the area and finding your desired property. Once you've done that, um, you want to sort of organise going on a viewing trip. And um, obviously, once you see the property that you like, hopefully negotiate a price and have your offer accepted. Um, the process then from offer being accepted through to completion can vary quite a lot. Uh, the average is three to nine months, which is obviously quite uh, quite a big range, but it all, you know, every every property is different. Uh, and of course, could be could be even longer than that if you're buying the property off plan as well. Um, and then the final step, of course, is completing and paying for the property. Lovely, thank you. And at what point do you suggest people consider currency um, in the buying process? Yeah, I mean, honestly, the earlier the better. Uh, the, the best time to sort of engage with us is uh, as, as soon as you're starting to make plans to buy, even if you think, uh, oh, you know, that's uh, something that will happen at the sort of very end of the process, the earlier that you sort of engage with it and understand how that process works. Uh, and you can also agree to sort of uh, how how you actually plan to move the money over, you know, make a, a plan for, um, you know, what you'd like to do so that uh, when you actually have found the property and you're you're looking to move forward with the process, you're already well versed with how it's going to work and what how you want to move the money when the time comes. Okay, fab. So, um, as you mentioned, the pound to euro rate is pretty good at the moment. So, is there an opportunity where I can benefit from that now? Yeah, absolutely. So, if you feel that the exchange rates are good, and like I said, they are at the moment, you have uh, a few options available to you to, to lock the exchange rate ahead of time um, to so you don't sort of miss out. So, we have uh, a lot of different ways you can you can do that, uh, whether you're a cash buyer or whether your sort of your funds are going to be available at a later date. One of those things is called a forward contract, which is where you can agree to buy uh, an amount of currency at a pre-agreed exchange rate for a date in the future. So, uh, if you know Know, you know roughly the amount that you want to send and roughly when you're going to be needing that money you can agree with us to lock into an exchange rate agree the cost to, uh, to you in pounds so that way you can't be affected by any currency movement between now and then uh, and so you know exactly what you're going to be paying for an overseas property no that sounds sensible thank you and what happens if you have a forward contract and let's say um heaven forbid the purchase falls through. 
Sure. So yes, if you buy a forward contract, you sort of are committing to buy uh, currency ahead of time. If it falls through, though, you know, we deal with thousands of property buyers every year and it, it, occasionally it, it happens. Not not so often, but occasionally it does. If that's the case, you know, have a chat with us and we can look to extend the contract uh, to sort of meet whatever new completion date uh, you, you sort of aiming for if you then go to buy another property in the future. OK, fab. Thank you. And why do you recommend, why, why should our listeners use smart currency exchange rather than going to their banks to transfer funds? Yeah, sure. So obviously, overseas property transactions are full of risk and can be very complicated. And our customers want expert help on the end of the phone so they can make informed decisions about moving their money. You know, if you go to your bank, they, there's a very general sort of um, not specific uh, sort of service. You know, your, your local branch of HSBC won't have a, a foreign currency uh, specialist available to you, nor will they be able to offer you things like forward contracts or other products that can help you. And of course, the main thing as well is that the banks aren't particularly cheap. They, uh, they're very, very expensive in terms of poor exchange rates that they can offer you and also uh, a lot of fees as well okay good to know thank you um and how does just for our viewers how does smart currency make its money yeah of course so um the inter the sort of market rate that i mentioned earlier the interbank rate because we're also an uh, institution that buys billions in currency every year we buy our currency close to that market rate as well uh, and then we um sell to you as a customer somewhat below that so the difference between uh, you know where we buy it from the market and where, where, where we're able to then sell to you that's how we make our money okay fabulous thanks so much michael some great insight there Pleasure. um so once you've started your budget out um you're probably ready to look at properties so let's speak to our property expert helen mm -hmm. helen what's the market like in cyprus at the moment can i find a bargain bargain okay the market is booming at the moment for all the reasons that michael said before the interest rates the crisis the rise in the cost of living that makes people come to cyprus relocate or retire to cyprus so um it's a very healthy market when you have a healthy market market prices the the, the properties are valuated at the right market price and um, of course, you know, in general, the prices are much better than in the UK, definitely, and in other countries. So you can find very good properties in good prices. Oops, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great to know. Um, so is there anything particularly popular at the moment that you're finding with buyers? Okay, you would expect me to answer houses with pools or apartments. I would say to you, it really depends on the buyer, who is buying and why. So we have two different categories. We have the people that they have a bit of an extra, extra money. And instead of placing them in the bank, that they're going to take very low interest rates and not a lot, they prefer to put that in a property to make that small investment. For that market, um, the best thing to buy in the last couple of years, it's apartments, new apartments in new complexes, nice, because um, the, the rental market has changed. People that they're uh, renting long term or people that they're renting for holiday rentals, they've also turned to apartments. So it's, you see, it's who is buying, who is renting, the, the people, they are uh, dictating the market. Now, other people that they come here to relocate or retire, it's up to them. It's personal taste. Some people, they can't stand being in an apartment and they want a house with a garden, no matter what. Some people, they can't be bothered. They just want the apartments. And some people, they prefer not to bother with fixing and maintenance and things, so buy it new. Some people, they're Mr. Fix, Mr. and Mrs. Fix, so they insist to buy all their properties and fix it all themselves. So it's who is buying and why. Lovely, thank you. Um, so really down to personal preference. Um, okay, so what should what would you suggest that people should budget for buying costs? Buying costs. Now, 
It depends again on the property and the value of the property. On Cypress Emerald, on our website, we have uh, uh, we have somewhere a calculating fee thing, so you know exactly what and what. Uh, there are stamp duty fees that you pay for, and Eleni, our lawyer, who's going to speak later, knows pretty much about that. Trust me. Title the uh, transfer fees and the VAT. Um, when our when our uh, clients decide more or less they're between like a couple of properties we can pretty accurately calculate how much that would cost of course people must not be afraid when they listen to the term vat some people are scared to buy new built properties because they think they're going to pay so much money but because when you're buying new built properties, you don't pay other things that you pay for resales, then the difference is not that much. So, um, and of course, if you're buying a new property, you don't have other costs like fixing it and maintaining it and things like this. So it depends, it's not much. Good, thank you. Um, and are the fees paid to you by the seller? Uh, by yes, by the seller here yeah. in Cyprus, uh, the person that is selling the property and the developers they pay our fees. Okay, great, thank you. And in terms of um, the service that you provide, how does that compare to that in the UK? Okay, because we're different markets here, the people, as I said before, they're coming into a different country, um, so they need more help than they need in the UK. Uh, and we in Cyprus Emerald, we provide that. Um, we are a one-stop shop, like Eleni Filippo said, that's why, you know, we we work with lawyers like Eleni and, and us because we provide the whole service. We don't just sell the property and then thank you very much, bye-bye. We have an after sales department uh, that we're making sure everything goes smoothly until the purchase of the property. Customer service department after the purchase is, is through to help choose the help with the furniture, help with um, bringing, um, you know, their personal belongings from the UK, um, everything. So we assist in everything. Um, normally, we end up to be a very nice family <laughs> with our clients because we, we're working close. Yeah, I've heard that. And you're definitely like the experts on the ground there. So, yeah, um, yeah it really pays off to kind of get as much as you can out of your ex uh, estate agent like Helen. Um, she's the expert. So use her as you will. <laughs> um, OK, so what would you say is the typical time scale for finding a property that you like and then getting the keys? Again, I will use something that Eleni used to say, how long is a piece of string? So, because uh, Michael said that before, okay, typically we can say three to nine months, right? Because we need to give a time frame. However, every property is different. Some things, they're not just from, we have the buyer as well. The buyer needs to go through a certain process. Um, the seller, the property, the lawyer to check. Then you have, because we are busy here in Cyprus, because people are really, truly buying properties in Cyprus, you know, the, the authorities like the land registry, the tax office, they're a little bit overwhelmed. So be a little bit patient. Yes, we can give the time frame of three to nine months, but, you know, just be a little bit patient, trust us and be patient. <laughs> yes, definitely patience is always key. Um, okay, so do you have any tips for um, viewers when they come to do their viewing trip to look at properties? Yeah, okay. We recommend, if that's possible, if it suits, of course, the personal program, not to choose to come during the high season here, not July and August. It's too hot, it's too busy, properties are occupied, and definitely that time in Cyprus, you just want to relax in a beach like the one you have at the background and not just <laughs> go and view properties, no. If you can help it, we recommend come off season, like now springtime, which we are busy, and autumn. Um, 
we recommend to come not on the last minute that you're planning to buy a property. It's better to start that process like, if possible, a year before. Uh, come come to Cyprus, talk to Cyprus Emerald about even a viewing trip, and then just get to know the, we get to know the person, the what what you like, what you don't like, what are your needs, what how you imagine your life here in Cyprus. And then we take you around the island, we do the area tour um, to areas that after our conversation, we believe they suit better with the personality. Because, okay, properties we have, it's a small market, it's a small island, we can find you the property. Uh, the thing is to find the right property in the right area that you're going to be happy. Um, so you do all that so you know where you're going to go and then closer to when it's the actual time of moving, come a second time and choose the property. Okay, great. So you say um, that you take take your um, clients around. Do they would you do they have to um, hire a car or do you drive them from property to property? We we drive them. Uh, we can pick them up from the airport and then take them back again. We drive them to the properties. And normally, I mean, again, visit Cypress Emerald website and you're going to see there the viewing trip, how it's going to be arranged. And normally we arrange um, um, because an accommodation, we pay for the accommodation, that it's closer to the area that we think it suits better. So, and here everything is like in a walking distance, so you don't really need to hire a car. Okay, great. That's good to know. Um, and before um, anyone comes out to you on a viewing trip, is there anything that um, clients would have to do? Um, I know some agents um, require proof of funds. Yes, um, proof of funds is essential. It's essential for the real estate agent and for the lawyer for the whole buying process. So now, when... Um, it's not necessarily to bring it the very first time, but... When you come and you know that you're definitely buying a property, it's better you have some proof of income, proof of funds, which is easily acquired. Most most of us, we have it on our mobile phone. You know, it's things that they are through the banks. Our bank accounts are on the mobile phones. So uh, passports and a utility bill and the proof of funds, as I said, it's on our mobile is good enough. Lovely, thank you. And last but not least, do you have any last minute tips for buyers? Last minute tips for buyers. Trust us. Um, be open, talk with us. Let us let us know you. Um, we it's very important to know who you are and let us know why you want to buy and who you are, when do you plan to come? And it's like with your funds, we always respect the budget. So um, let us to know you and then trust us to take you around and show you the best property for you. Definitely, that's a good shout. Thank you, Helen. And last but not least, Eleni, thank you for being patient with us. <laughs> um, let's start with how early on in the buying process do you recommend buyers get in touch with a lawyer? Hold on, Rosie. Can I just say something based on what uh, Michael said before? Yeah. Um, an important thing that I think Michael didn't mention, um, and it really does affect the um, the, the, the property uh, transaction, is the fact that um, smart currency have segregated accounts. So when they receive funds from um, mm -hmm. uh, an intending buyer, they keep that money separate. And that is a key um uh, issue for the transaction for when the funds come to cyprus and it really makes the whole process a lot smoother uh -huh. so this is something that most people uh may not actually be aware of and they don't think oh you know i'm going to get my forward contract and everything's good and the rate's good but from a practical point of view from my side as a lawyer um the fact that they have segregated accounts makes the whole process a lot smoother so oh, that's great. sorry for interrupting the um, <laughs> the flow. So um, yeah. yeah, so um, I would basically recommend that 
um, the lawyer be the first person that somebody engages in the whole process um, simply because we can assist with the overall um, view of the situation. So it's a bit like looking at things from, from the top. So we can basically, depending on what people are looking for, are they looking uh, for a property as an investment? Are they connecting the property purchase with some kind of residency permissions or employment? Um, so by giving everyone the facts straight from the beginning, then they can seek the correct type of property um, so that they can link it to their immigration needs if they have any. Um, so um, start early, um, speak to us, tell us what you're looking at doing so we can sort of direct you whether you need um, a resale property, whether you need a brand new property, uh, whether you, you, know, you can go for an apartment or a house, etc. And then we can tell you if you know, your dream of, let's say, retiring or um, being employed in Cyprus or uh, whatever it is that you want to do, uh, how it can be made possible. So, I mean, I'd hate to get somebody comes out here, goes on a viewing trip. Helen finds him a beautiful property. They fall in love with it. Then they say, Eleni, we've got the property and um, I want to get permanent residency. And I'm going to be like, wrong type of property. So then, you know, it's important to know from the beginning so that expectations are set, so they know exactly what they're looking for. Um, and then we don't have disappointments. Also, hiring a lawyer right from the beginning means that you have clarity as to what kind of paperwork you're going to need um, from the beginning. And again, what kind of uh, paperwork you will need for the property purchase and also for your immigration needs. Um, Helen mentioned a little bit about uh, source of funds. This is actually a really, really important part of the whole purchase process especially in recent years with um, the EU uh, directives on anti-money laundering and things like that. So we would actually give people a list of the documents we will need from day one so they know exactly what they need to supply because um, you're here, let's say, on an inspection trip, you see that property that you really, really love, you, you know, your offer is accepted and you have to put down a reservation deposit. Well, what do you do, you know? And then you've got to have money that flows from the UK or wherever your money is. Uh, it needs to be able to flow into Cyprus to be able to exchange contracts, to be able to eventually lead to completion. Um, so the banking side of things is quite important. And again, it's something that we can advise from day one. So you know exactly what kind of paperwork you need to collect. So you're basically lifting all the stress that could possibly be um, involved with the whole purchase process. So lawyer, day one, First. please make life easier. <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. sounds like a good idea to have an idea of all the documents that you need to take with you because the last thing yeah. you need is to know you left it on your bedside table. <laughs> exactly. Um, just to, to add a little bit to that is that a lot of the times it's good to get your paperwork in order and bring it with you as well. Um, or sometimes we collect the paperwork from people. We know it, we call it KYC or know your client information. And then we've got it all ready and set. And then they start looking for a property. So when they do find the property, it's a bit like the forward contract that Michael discussed before. You've got your money. It's there. It's set, ready to go. Um, it's the same thing with the lawyer. You've got your paperwork, your KYC. It's there. It's ready to go. And then you're in the hands of Helen. She'll find you the property. So then everything falls into place. Now, um, also to mention for people who may not be aware that Cyprus was a British colony and the difference between Cyprus and Greece is primarily we are kind of bilingual. So um, everyone in Cyprus will speak English. We also drive on the correct side of the road. Um, and um, um, the problem is if you are looking at learning Greek, Cyprus is probably not your best, um, uh, you know, your best place because 
you're going to be attempting to speak in Greek and everybody's just going to reply to you in English. So there is that. So documents don't need to be translated in Cyprus because English is like a second language for us. So anything which is uh, in English, you're good to go. No need for translations. Contracts are also in English uh, prepared and drafted so you can read um, what you're signing and you won't be signing your lives away. I promise. Like brackets, trust me, I'm a lawyer, but um, <laughs> that was just a joke. Sorry. Um, so, yes, everything's in English, so no need to worry. Oh, that's great. No, I know some some countries you obviously have to translate all the all the contracts. So not a concern. That's great to hear. No. no. Um, so what are the most popular services that you help non-Cypriot buyers with? So um, we typically um, obviously assist with uh, purchases of property or sales of property, um, immigration, um, the immigration side of things. So uh, temporary residence permits, um, permanent residence permits and all the immigration side of things. Um, also, a lot of people um, will contact us for company registrations and corporate needs basically for those people who uh, wish to uh, invest in Cyprus or they want to somehow put Cyprus in their overall business structure. So they may have, you know, uh, business concerns and things like that. Um, and also a large part of it is also our um, uh, wills drafting and estate planning for those people who again have assets in many jurisdictions so uh drafting of wills and uh, information about probate and eventually probate assistance as well when you know the need uh, occurs okay great thanks um just before i go to the next question i will let our viewers know you can ask questions um there's a q a tab just at the bottom um and i will ask our um, experts on your behalf um, so, Eleni, you don't need a visa to buy in Cyprus, but you do if you want to live there long term. Is that right? Correct. So you can travel to Cyprus visa free. That has always been the case. Like I said before, uh, Commonwealth, British colony and all that. So you can uh, come to Cyprus and stay for a maximum of 90 days visa free. Not a problem. If, however, you have a plan of uh, staying longer, you need to get in touch with us um, quite early in the process so that we can actually uh, book you appointments with the immigration department to actually get you registered. Uh, Post-Brexit, um, the same rules apply to British passport holders as to all other non-EU um, passport holders. So if you wish to extend your 90 days, you need to either go for a temporary residence permit, which is commonly known as a pink slip. A lot of people know it as that. Um, and that's usually given for about 12 months at a time. And you have to keep renewing it. Um, for people who wish to have a fast track permanent residency on the island, there is a, um, a route that gets connected with the purchase of a brand new property but there are conditions. So, for example, the property has got to be um, brand new, never used, purchased directly from the developer for 300,000 plus VAT because only new properties bear VAT. And there are some other requirements as well, which you can, you can then go down the fast track route to permanent residency, which means you and your immediate family don't need to worry about uh, renewing permissions, coming or going, etc. It's important to note because a lot of people think that with a permanent residency or with a temporary residency, they get rights of employment, but that's not the case. So um, although you may be able to get residency, you're not allowed to work. That goes, yes, it's a different type of permission to be able to work, but for those viewers who um, are interested in somehow being employed, either being either running their own companies or their own businesses or being employed um, by any company in Cyprus, we will provide them with tailor made, um, you know, uh, guidelines so that they know what to expect. Uh, because, again, 
post Brexit, you need um, work permits. Okay, and is a work is a work visa a thing, or is work permit it's alongside the work visa? Permit, work permit, employment permit, work visa, same thing. Okay, there and are different types depending mm-hmm. on, you know, the criteria of the person, but they're all they all go under the umbrella of um, employment uh, permission. Okay, um, we've had a question on, um something that you've just said I'm just trying to put it into context um Antonio has asked is that 90 days per year or per per visit so I'm assuming he's referring to the 90 day rule yes 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 so the 90 day rule is basically pretty much the same in in the whole of the European Union so it's 90 days for every six months so so let's just give a really simple example um you come into Cyprus on the 1st of January Right. So you have 90 days visa free. If you, you know, up until um, the end of June. So you've got your six months. Right. So if you you can come and go as long as you don't exceed the 90 days or you can stay 90 days in one go. But then you need to leave and then you need to come back in the next six months of the year. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Um, And just on that note, this is the bit that confuses me. Um, So the 90 day rule, let's say um, we're British citizens. So we're outside the EU. Let's say I spend, it's 1st of January, I spend 60 days in Cyprus and then go to France for 30 days, you know, in our ideal world. Um, Will that 30 days in France count towards my 90 days? No, no. No, it won't. Ah, good to know. I always get confused by that one. Um, okay. And what would you recommend is the best visa option for retirees? Well, that depends, like Helen said before, on the circumstances of the actual um, uh, person who wishes to to retire, because it depends on the budget, really, and the type of property they want to go for. So if a brand new property for 300,000 plus VAT which gives them the right to do the fast track permanent residency is not an option, then the other option is going for uh, initially the temporary residency, which means that they have to keep renewing it every year. And then after they've spent five years in Cyprus, then they can apply for the more permanent residency um, option. However, even that's gonna take a little bit of time for it to be processed. So you have to keep renewing your temporary until such time as you can, you know, um, renew your, yeah, exactly. Once you get around to it, good. Yeah, yeah. So Um, it depends on budget. Of course, yeah. Um, So let's say I found my dream property and put an offer in. Um, I give you a call. What's the next steps? Okay, so I said get the lawyer right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, So on... This scenario, the question you've just asked, um, if you had already been in contact with us and we collected all your paperwork, then you would have already spoken to us and then you would know that I don't advise anyone to put down any deposits. Helen is smiling. Um, <laughs> don't don't pay anything until we've checked it. Um, just to make sure that the, the transaction is, you know, uh, all kosher and everything yeah. is everything is fine. Um, it will take literally five minutes. So, uh, for example, because I'm not going to be doing the thorough due diligence searches, which are going to be done at a later um, stage, but I would ask the estate agent to basically let me have the basic information of the transaction. So does this property have a title deed? Show it to me. I want to see what it is that you're buying and what the legal basis of what you're buying is. If within like five minutes of going through the paperwork that the estate estate agent should already have in hand, I can sort of say to the client, yep, not a problem, put down the reservation deposit and then everything else will come up in the due diligence process, which is from the moment of paying the reservation deposit until the signing of contracts, until exchange of contracts. So um, the other thing, when you have had an offer accepted, um, so the first thing is the lawyer needs to just 
check very quickly that everything's okay. And the second thing is, it's important to check the terms under which you are paying that reservation deposit. So uh, is it refundable? Under what circumstances? Because naturally, if the due diligence searches show problems, then you should be able to get that reservation deposit back. Um, now, uh, uh, most of the times, if you decide that you're going to pull out for reasons of your own as the buyer, you usually lose that reservation deposit. Um, how about if you're borrowing? If you've got part of the money and part of the money is being borrowed from a bank, what if you don't um, get your loan approval, either in the UK or in Cyprus? You know, what happens to your reservation deposit? Do you lose it or, or do, you get it, do you get that back? So usually estate agents will have a document called a reservation uh, deposit or a, uh, sorry, a reservation agreement or reservation receipt. And we just need to briefly look at the wording to make sure exactly what's going to happen to that reservation deposit once your offer has been accepted. I'm talking too much, aren't I? No, 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 don't worry. Well, how, all, how are we doing with time? It's, okay. it's all interesting. No, um, okay. we've got a few more minutes and then we'll get yes, to yes, questions yes. from Fine. the audience. Um, so actually, I will ask you about title deeds now because otherwise I'll forget. Um, so you say the first thing is you ask Helen, does it have title deeds? What if it doesn't have title deeds? So the title deed um, chapter, right. So... <laughs> A property not having a title deed is not necessarily a problem, okay? Um, it may be that the title deed is in the pipeline uh, because it does take some time. It takes a couple of years for title deeds to be issued in Cyprus for a new property. However, if a property doesn't have a title deed, it means that we need to check why it doesn't have a title deed. Is it just it's in the normal process and it just hasn't been issued yet? Or is it a problematic property and it should have already had a title deed, but it's not going to get a title deed because there's a problem with it. The same way is if Helen tells me this property has a title deed, it doesn't necessarily mean that everything's hunky dory. It still means that I have to check that the title deed is um, all clear and there are no problems with it because you can still have um, bad title deeds. So it, not necessarily a problem if there isn't a title deed, but we still need to check, do the due diligence searches. And it's not necessarily a good thing if a property does have a title deed. Again, we still have to check that everything's in order. Yep, sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. So Sorry. on the title deed thing, just a little bit, um, because you can have title deeds of land, okay? You can have title deeds for the property. And a lot of times people get confused. Oh, but I was told that there's a title deed and it's the title deed for the land. So there is a process which um, the builder has to follow once the a property or a block of flats or what, whatever it is, the structure, whatever the structure is, they have to follow a process um, to actually put that structure on the deed of the land. Or if it's a project, they get what we call separate title deeds. So the, the title deed of the land gets cancelled out completely and you get, let's say, 50 new title deeds issued, one per housing unit on that project. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking to see that, not that there is a title deed for the land. Well, we know that. Um, what we're looking for is to see that the actual property has a good, clean, clear title deed um, on its own. Okay, fab, thank you. And I assume you'll be able to assist with throughout this process. Oh, absolutely. Lovely, absolutely. thank you. Yeah. Um, and if I'm looking at a property that might need some conversion or renovation, can you advise on the likelihood of getting planning permission? So conversions, like you said, need planning permission, building permission, final approval certificates, etc. Now, um, from a legal perspective, this is not in, in our job as such, because this is in the field of uh, civil engineering, architecture, etc. So when we have clients who actually want to go down that route and they know it from the beginning because they've bought a property which uh, will need renovating, from the onset, we will say, right, okay, 
we will recommend a, a few architects or a few civil engineers, depending on what the needs are, um, so that the client can actually explain what they need, get quotes, and we usually work with civil engineers or architects who um, follow the British system of doing things mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I, we like to uh, to work with like-minded um, professionals. So the clients will know what to expect. They'll be able to communicate uh, with these associates in English. And um, so therefore, once the property purchase has been completed, they can then proceed and get new plans drawn up, new applications, your planning permissions issued, etc. And whatever changes that, you know, are done to a property, then the title deed may also need to be updated at the end of those um, uh, renovations works. or construction works. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you. Um, okay. I'll get around to our questions from our audience now. Okay. Um, so, as Eleni mentioned, um, some of the fast track residency requires um, you to buy a new build. Helen, is that something that you can help with? Do you have developments on your books? Yes, lots of developments. Um, because now the old properties, the resales, the already built properties, they're kind of finished, you know, they're not much available out there. So most of the developments now they're new. Um, as I said, because we have, we're 20 years on the market and more, uh, we have acquired uh, very close relationships with uh, trustworthy developers that they are on the island the same time. So they have proven who they are and uh, the quality of their work. Um, we have in, in all areas, um, I'm based, the company is based in the Famagusta area, Porotaras Paralini, uh, but also we're working very closely with good developers in Paphos, in Larnaca, which is booming at the moment, um, everywhere. Uh, okay, Limassol, yes, of course, even though Limassol is not that popular with the British, but we, yes, we do work in Limassol as well. Okay, good to know, thank you. And, um... Lost Sorry, <laughs> pesky mute. <laughs> Eleni, um, Fleur's asking, if we don't buy a new property to obtain fast track residency, how much longer does it take to get residency on a resale property? Right, so like we said before, if you don't, uh, if you can't buy a brand new property and go through the fast track residency, the first step is basically to apply for temporary residency. Um, as mentioned previously, uh, this is usually issued for 12 months at a time. So every 12 months, we have to uh, keep renewing it. And then once you've renewed it for five years and you've been a resident for five years, then we can apply for a more permanent, um, uh, for the permanent residency application. But that will also take time for it to be uh, checked by the authorities. So while that application is being examined, you have to keep renewing your temporary residency. So effectively, it's a temporary residency. You keep renewing it until such time as you can proceed with something more permanent. Okay, fab, thank you. Um, I'll answer this question to probably both Helene and Ellen, and Helen, sorry. <laughs> um, Fleur's also asking, is there a, Obviously, it depends on requirements and how expensive the property is, but um, how much percent would you say that buyers need to kind of benchmark for fees, you know, legal fees, buying fees, that kind of thing? Okay, legal fees, Eleni will say, I know, but uh, since we have Eleni here, uh, now buying, as I said, there is because there are scales as like normally the first 85,000 they're free from something and so so I would say from five to ten thousand for anything until 
perhaps 200, 250, and then, you know, we, we go up. As a, any anybody who's interested and wants to have an idea, please go to our website, Cypress Emerald, and find there the buying fees. And then you're going to have a pretty, pretty good idea of calculating yourself. So you can check our website, see a property that you like, go there, and then you have more or less what, what you're going to need. Oh, that's handy, thank you. And Eleni? <laughs> right, okay. So obviously this is this is a question that we get, one of the first questions that we always get from, from people because um, budgeting is, is super important for, for everyone, especially when, when you are going to be investing abroad and you don't know how things work, etc. So one of the first things that we do for people when, when they give us an indication of what they're looking at doing, one of the first things we do is provide them with overall estimated budgets. A lot of the times we do mock estimated budgets when people haven't even found a property yet. So um, we will do, we will send them like the mock budget based yeah. on, let's say, a hypothetical uh, resale property purchase of, let's say, 200,000. Um, and um, when they do find the property that, you know, and they put in the offer, what we do is we reassess the overall estimated budget based on the circumstances of the particular property that they're going to buy. So um, as Helen said, the overall budget um, depends on the type of property that you are looking at buying because the costs are different. For example, if you are buying a brand new property for 300,000 plus VAT, and they're different if you're buying a resale property for 300,000. Um, so we like transparency. We like everything to be really, really clear and, 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 and set out because budgeting is really important for everyone. So from day one, we will prepare and provide the overall estimated budget for the purchase to include the legal fees and the VAT, um, any land registry fees, any land revenue fees. Uh, we go down to things like even connecting the water and the electric and uh, even assisting with um, insurance if if clients need it. So, um, like I said, overall budget, even a mock estimated budget from the beginning just to assist. Because sometimes people think, well, I've got 250,000, you know, what should be my budget for, for looking for a property? So if you have an estimate, like a, like a mock budget, then you know, oh, right, okay, so... The top range that I should be looking for a property is, for example, 240, so I can spend the other 10K on all the other relevant expenses. And that, I think, usually helps people decide what, you know, what the budget is for uh, telling Helen. It's like, oh, that's my maximum, that's my maximum budget sort of thing, because they yeah. know. Makes so, sense. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And um, we've got a question for Michael next. Um, does smart currency just deal in pound to euros or is there a variety of currencies you deal with? Yeah, absolutely. No, not just pounds to euros. We deal in all the major currencies uh, and also a, a small suite of the minor ones as well. So if uh, if you were looking for a specific, specific currency, please let me know. But I'm, I'm certain that we, we will be able to deal with that. OK, lovely. Thank you. Sorry. Um, Eleni, um, Fleur's asking, if we move to Cyprus to retire, can we keep our bank accounts, premium bonds and investments in the UK? Absolutely, Fleur. Yes, you can. OK, so um, you do need to open a bank account in Cyprus. OK, and you do need to, to transfer funds for uh, your living expenses and what have you, depending on the type of um, residency that you're going to have but it doesn't affect um, your bank accounts in the UK or any other financial planning that you may have um, in place. Um, so you don't need to worry from that point of view. And we do assist with bank account opening as well. Um, so pretty much we hold your hand straight from, from day one. So you don't need to be concerned about that. That's good to know, thank you. Um, and back to Michael, um, let's say, I'm not entirely sure who you would pay if you're buying a property. I assume you either pay to your solicitor or the estate agent. I'm sure. It's generally the solicitor of the vendor, um, in my experience. 
I'm getting nope. nods from everyone. No? Oh, sorry. No, nope, no. Nope. Um, initially, the funds, um, the, the process is that funds are only, uh, only change hands once we've signed contracts. So because the signing of contracts and the payment of funds needs to be done simultaneously, usually money is paid either into an escrow account or the solicitor's client's account um, at, so that it's ready for the signing of contracts. Because what we don't want to do is prepay for the property and not have a signed contract. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we're doing it simultaneously. So we're like, well, sign here and here's the money. So it's done. So yeah. at least at least when it comes to the first amount, which is with the signing of contracts, usually around 30% of the purchase price, we need to be able to control it so it doesn't go to the seller's lawyer before it needs to. So it either comes to us or um, it will uh, sit with you. And then when, once we've instructed you, so for example, we've signed contract, Michael, please send the money to the seller's lawyer now kind of thing. And then that's when it goes to the seller's lawyer. Sorry for butting you. No, you're good, you're good. Thank you for that. Um, Michael, I assume you're able to send it to whoever I ask. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's to, uh, you know, if, if you need, if, if let's say you're not specifically sending money for the property itself, you can send money directly to your own bank account as well. But essentially anywhere it needs to go. Yeah. Okay. So let's say I want to order a huge food shop for when I arrive. Can you help me with that? Uh, so we can help put the money in the in the bank account in the account uh, in, in Cyprus, so that uh, you can pay for it. I can't do the shopping for you, but uh, I can uh, <laughs> help you have the money there. <laughs> it's worth a try, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, um, we are uh, quickly running out of time now. Um, thank you to all of our experts for your insightful advice and tips. Um, before we head off, um, I did want to ask you, what can our viewers find at your booth in the exhibition hall? Obviously, we're encouraging um, our viewers to go and have a look at your services. And what can they find there? Let's start with Helen. Okay. Okay. They can find, they can find our website. They can find information of all the services that we offer. Uh, as I said, we also, we have a variety of services from before they buy, while they're buying and after. Um, even we provide, we have maintenance companies, we have, you know, enough, a whole after sales thing. Um, um, emails, information, you can contact us at any time. It's like, if you have any questions, on on anything just drop us an email on on the general email we have there and we'll be more than happy to help you with everything we're not charging everything we're just gonna have a chat so please welcome come to our booth and get to know us yeah lovely thank you helen um yeah you can chat to all of our experts at their booths after this call um, and I do know, I had a look at yours beforehand, Helen, um, you can also find the links for all of their properties. So oh. definitely go have a little browse. Oh. And um, it's nice to finish your coffee and just to browse the properties. It's a nice thing to do on a Saturday morning, isn't definitely, it? Definitely, yeah. A good way to start the day. Michael, how about Smart? Yeah, so our, our booth has a, a lot of different resources. You can speak to an account manager like me to discuss your currency requirements. Uh, you can browse our other services online, you know, re request a free quote, and lots of others. There's also, if you go to our resources tab, there's a, a free buyer's guide to currency that I'd really recommend downloading, just has a bit, bit more information about what, how we help and what we can do. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Michael. And last but not least, Eleni. Well, you have me at the booth, so you can talk to me. <laughs> Even <also>. better. <laughs> yeah. Um, we do have some links for uh, like a buyer's guide and some information about um, residency permissions and, and immigration matters. Um, of course, on our website, we actually have a lot more information and guides about different different things um, uh, that you and information that you can actually um, read um and of course like i said you know uh without joking you can come to the booth and ask any questions directly um and you know if you if you have questions or if you just need information or or anything just come and chat 
Lovely, thank you. Um, to all of our viewers, thank you for joining us. We strongly recommend you get in touch with all our experts directly to discuss your requirements in detail. They'll all be available at their booths in the exhibition hall should you have any more questions. Um, we encourage you to take full advantage of our virtual platform. It will be available on demand for a further 30 days. Um, so yes, speak to our experts, add resources to your goodie bag and good luck with your Cyprus property purchase. Thanks again all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.